Hey guys, it's me, Cans, and today I was going to take you with me to show you how I finished inking and finalized this drawing I made for Netflix's Wednesday. Um, I usually do most of my drawing at night, so unfortunately I don't have any film of this, but trust me, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, today's art supplies are going to be these three paintbrushes uh, by Della Rowney. I have no idea what size they are because I've had them for so long, the lettering's worn off the handles. Then I'm going to be using this kneaded eraser, a staple in your pencil case. Um, and this inking pen, I think it's a size 3, but it's a no-name brand. And then finally, I'm going to be using De La FW ink in black. It's an acrylic ink, it's really nice and dark. And then obviously, my coffee. Usually when I'm doing an ink illustration, I like to keep it black, white, and grayscale, but today I wanted to try and make that perfect Wednesday purple color for the background using this blue and magenta acrylic ink by Dala. It's a local South African brand, and so we'll see how this goes. The first thing I'm going to do in preparation for this drawing is to lightly erase um, the sketch with a kneaded eraser, just so that when the inking's finished you don't see any of that graphite coming through. I like to fill my dip pen over this little hole in the middle of it, and then I can start inking. This paper is kind of rough, so I tend to have a little bit of trouble making sure that the line is even, but I mean, it works, so you know. Obviously, you can't have drawing a Wednesday Adams video without having a little bit of a review of the show itself. So, as an artist, or from an artist's perspective, I really enjoyed this program because the dark and moody aesthetic of the whole thing was something that I really have been enjoying in my own personal art recently. And so when I saw all of the the props and the settings that they had made up, I just knew I had to draw something related to this program. And Wednesday is an iconic character in general. I'm sure by now most of the globe knows who she is. Um, but she's always had a, a bit of a spot in my heart, you know, just for her. Um, so now in lining her eyes, I had some trouble because I remember when I was drawing them, Getting that perfectly deadpan look is incredibly difficult, and I didn't want to mess it up with the ink, because that is irreversible. Um, so I went in with some just heavy kind of, I want to say, eyeliner, um, to give it that very stark, like, looking you dead in the soul kind of feel. I personally think that the casting for this show was really great, because Jenna Ortega plays a fantastic Wednesday Adams. She just got that look perfectly down, and... Um, you know, I think working with Tim Burton, there's always something to do with the eyes. Any artist will tell you he's got a specific way of uh, dealing with the eyes of a person. And it's quite unique and quite interesting. So I really wanted to get this section right and make sure that, you know, it really screams just Wednesday. Totally morbid, totally unemotional, and does not give a care at all to what you think, you know? Similarly, what I enjoy about this rendition of Wednesday Adams is that she's got these really full lips that, I don't know, create an interesting contrast to her eyes because her eyes are so dark and so, like, kind of creepy. And then her lips are so full and beautiful and pretty. And I feel like a lot of people are praising the casting directors for Jen Ortega, who has, well, beautiful lips. Um, so I really also wanted to focus on making sure that those came across at least somewhat like Jenna Ortega's do. Then, um, in terms of eyebrows, I don't really remember seeing Wednesday's eyebrows very much during the show. Um, but as I've looked at more of the promotional pictures and I've looked at Jenna Ortega, I kind of kept it simple, plain and thin because in the end her hair is going to cover the eyebrows anyway. Then her outfit... <laughs> I used a promotional picture that I will show you now um, and kind of put my own little spin on it. I mean, it's basically just still black, white, and gray, um, but I wanted to make it simpler so that it reads better. Oh, there you go. So that it reads better in my artwork. Um, now you can see me drawing in her eyelashes, which had to be big and glorious and dramatic because that's just how Wednesdays are. Um, I'd love to know what mascara she uses because, yikes, that'd be amazing to have such great eyes. Um, yeah. From an artistic perspective, eyelashes are some of my favourite things to draw just because uh, if you know the basic directions of how eyelashes grow, you tend to be able to make really cool ones. And I really like to go for very dramatic, very bold, 
very just you have to notice them kind of eyelashes. Now, inking Wednesday's quote unquote friend um, thing was kind of difficult because not only is this character just a hand, which is obviously one of the most complicated things that most artists struggle trying to draw, um, Thing also has his own personality, so it's hard to kind of capture that strange quirkiness of Thing as well as make sure that the hand looks semi-realistic. Um, I remember redrawing him a few times when I was sketching this out because I was just totally out of my depth and I had no idea how I was going to do it. Um, I really wanted to stick to the interesting character design they did for Thing because instead of just leaving him be a normal hand, they covered him with these really dark, bold stitches and something about that just really intrigued me. So I tried to make it as accurate to the show's stitching as I could. I even did some of my own research myself and found out that Thing's full name is Thing T Thing, which I thought might be a bit unimaginative, but at the same time, I really just enjoyed that. So I think that this is a perfect example of why dip pens are just the coolest, is that when you apply more pressure, obviously, you get thicker lines, darker, bolder, more obvious. And then if you just gently kind of scratch over the paper with it, you get these thin little lines that really help to bring some detail without making it too in your face. Um, I spent a lot of time analyzing how things fingernails worked, which might sound weird, but um, he's got kind of a bluey tint at the end of his fingers, probably because he has like no real blood flow. Um, and I wanted to make sure that you know, the nails were done just right. So here you can see me trying to ink the title I did at the bottom of the page. Um, it's obviously just her name, Wednesday. Um, but I didn't want it to be just abstract calligraphy. I wanted to copy close as perfect that I could to what the show's actual title looks like. And it's not any kind of calligraphy that I've done before, um, but I really enjoyed it because it just kind of had this dark, gothic kind of feel to it and I really like I say I've really been enjoying that um, and there's something very satisfying about lettering with a dip pen because you feel like you are part of a Shakespearean play or a Jane Austen novel which in my opinion is great um, yeah I just had a lot of fun practicing with this and learning a new style of writing Okay, so now comes a personal favorite part of any illustration, in my opinion, and that is using the actual brush that I have to put ink down and create the texture and the darkness of Wednesday's hair. So I'm using the smallest of those De La Rani paint brushes. I think this is a zero. Again, I couldn't tell you. I've had them for so long. Um, and I'm starting with the fringe because I really wanted to lock down the kind of flow and wispiness that her fringe has. I think that's something really unique that Tim Burton brought to this rendition of Wednesday. Because all the other Wednesdays we've seen historically have had like stern plaits, stern pigtails, um, and nothing to break that and soften the face. And I think that, at least with the character being played by Jenna Ortega, you need something a bit feminine, a bit soft, even though it's maybe a bit controversial because that's definitely not Wednesday. But I think that softness creates a bit of a human side to her that we don't really get to see often. My personal technique when blocking in big chunks of dark hair is to really kind of play with the light. Because if it's white paper and black ink, you're taking away a lot of the light. And that's usually very essential in any illustration. Um... So what I've done is I would mark out the main chunks of hair I wanted to work with at that time. And then I would go and flick my paintbrush from the top down and from the bottom up and leave a kind of section of white space in the middle to create a shine, a bit of a gloss, um, just to make that hair alive rather than just blocking in straight black because that'll make the piece look really flat in the end. And that's not really fun. Um, I have a lot of fun drawing hair in general. I like how play with it and really anything you do to it it'll end up looking kind of like hair um, and I really enjoyed the swoopiness of Wednesday's hair particularly 
I actually have bangs myself and I was growing them out and then when I saw the show I was like okay um mom please can you draw my bangs again um another thing that I wanted to do with this hair because it's all so pitch black I wanted to make sure that you could clearly see the difference between the hair on her head and the hair in her fringe because ugh, it's very difficult to get that sometimes you know um it does blend in really closely but I wanted to make sure that you could see definitely oh there is a difference between the head hair and the fringe hair and I think I was successful um you guys let me know what you think Okay, so now I want to show you how I managed to draw in her plaits. Um, it's kind of weird to draw them. Basically what you're doing is just drawing weird oval shapes squished together like Play-Doh. And then um, I do the same thing I did for the main chunk of hair. I outline the shape that I was working with and I just tape it off little brush flicks from the bottom and from the top. And occasionally put a solid line through just to create a bit of, you know, dimension and difference in the hair chunks i want to say um this was also just really satisfying for me i love seeing pieces of art come together like that then i used my dip pen again just to create thin little strands to give that hair a bit more of a realistic look um and feather it out around her eyes so that you can see that oh this is individual strands of hair not just big swaths of ink um so i think that that really changed how the hair looked so I'm going to tell you that right after I filmed that section, I dipped my inky pen into my cup of coffee, which is a sacred artist mistake. Um, now I'm using an ink wash that was too light for her shirt, but perfect for her eyeshadow, which I think is a big part of the character design for Wednesday. That eyeshadow just creates that bigness and roundness in her eyes, and so I think that that was a really, really fun and interesting way to interpret Wednesday. Now I'm filling in her lips with just a solid base colour to start to create that illusion in my own mind that the lips have this importance on this character. Then I shade in the ears, and then I'm going to put a big block of ink right underneath her chin onto her neck. Um, this is just going to create that three-dimensional aspect. And then I use water to gently kind of brush that down to her collar so that it doesn't look so blocky so solid then i use the same ink wash still and i start chiseling in the really really defined jaw and cheekbones that jenna ortega has that i think really just were perfect for this character um wednesday's always supposed to have looked very gaunt very kind of a bit skeletal i want to say but not that bad she's always supposed to have very like sharp features because i think that gives her kind of scary look Other than her cheekbones and her neck, I tried to go very gentle and soft on the rest of the shading for her face because she is supposed to be so pale that her skin is actually white and she's supposed to exist in just black and white. So here's where you'll see me colour in Wednesday's irises. This is the first of a few different layers that I'm going to do. Um, I really love that her eyes are so dark they look almost black. And now I'm going to be shading in Thing, which was interesting because I wanted to make sure there was an obvious difference between Thing's skin and Wednesday's skin. That is kind of hard to do with just black and white, um, so I went straight in for Thing's skin with a darker wash of ink, just because he's got a more of a raggedy, dirty sort of look. Um, and you'll see that I'm going to use that darker wash specifically on the ends of his fingers just to emphasize that kind of blood pooling coagulating effect that i was talking about that thing has um and this was really fun for me because i like working with dark topics i like working with things that are a little bit macabre i like to you know play with the the darker more taboo topics and I use them as subjects in my artwork because I really enjoy delving into things that aren't 
often drawn as other things are. Although I suppose in this case that's kind of rich because Wednesday is undoubtedly one of the most popular series on Netflix right now. Um, here I'm mixing a darker wash of that ink because I really want to go in and create clothing that is almost black but not solid black because if I went straight in with just ink um, it would blend in too closely to the hair and it wouldn't have any of that nice contrast. So this is where that kind of grayscale aspect of my own art really comes to play. Some characters, some subjects have a lot of black in their design and I just didn't want to lose the iconicness of her hair but also you know maintain that she only ever wears black because you know she's allergic to color so for her shirt i just kind of painted in these loose polka dotty kind of designs because the original shirt had some other pattern on it that was really cool but i had no idea what it was supposed to resemble and so i knew that if i tried to copy that into my own art it would just not come across very well so I ended up doing a few layers of this just to create um, a semblance of solid color because when you go over dry ink with new ink it's going to get darker anyway so I really wanted to make sure that that wasn't too obvious um, and then I wanted to create a bit of shading I suppose just to give the, the bottom half of this picture some interest. For Wednesday's iconic, really like sharp angled puffed kind of sleeves, I just wanted to go in straight with my quote unquote black, um, just a solid dark grey colour. And I layered this a few times as well, um, just because I felt it would make a nice sort of contrast with her plait and her like her shirt, and it would help define the character of Thing even better as well. Then I took a seriously light wash of the ink and I went through and I tried to make some shading on her collar without losing the whiteness of it. Um, I enjoy shading white because if you're doing it in color, there's no such thing as just black and white. There's blues and there's yellows involved and all sorts of things. Um, but for this, it was nice to keep it just simple and just have the gray. 
So now I'm adding a bit more dimension and shape to Wednesday's lips. She's got very iconic lips. I even heard that they had to make a specific custom color for Jenna Ortega until Tim Burton was happy with it. So that was interesting. Then I'm adding more shade and more levels of dimension to her irises, which are supposed to be, like I say, very, very dark. And now I'm also shading in her eyebrows because I forgot they even existed. Like I say, they're mostly hidden by her hair. And here I'm just deepening the shadows on Thing. I think that, again, he's a very interesting character. And I really, really like that he is this completely disembodied appendage, which is great. Um, but he's got a personality and he makes friends of his own and he is his own person. And I think that that's a really unique thing in, for this show. Now I'm just adding another layer of this dark grey black kind of colour to the sleeves. And I'm just going to go ahead and surround the nameplate of Wednesday with it as well. Just to kind of give it a finished, more polished look. Here's where I try to shade the area underneath her fringe. And you can see how I kind of struggled a bit because... I think I instantly went in a bit too dark in the first place, and then when I tried to blend it all out, the ink from the fringe itself started to bleed, and that was very frustrating, so I did my best to kind of smoothen it out, but I won't say it was my favourite part of this illustration. Now again, this blacking in of solid ink is one of my favorite parts of any ink illustration. So I'm just taking this nameplate that I've done for her and I'm coloring in the, I want to say negative space, I don't really know the term, um, to create a bit of contrast there. Now this part I didn't really think was going to be as much fun as it was for me. So in the background of this picture I really wanted to include that big spiderweb window or some elements of it from the show. Um, because I just think it was totally, you know, spooky. It was a bit cliche Halloween-y, but I really liked it. And I personally really enjoyed how on Enid's side of the room, the window was covered in, like, colourful plastic or something. And so created a stained glass kind of look on her side. But on Wednesdays, it was just black, white and grey. So I'm trying to recreate that chaotic kind of spiderweb. It's not very regimented or strictly follows a certain pattern it's a bit weird and it's a little bit like the spider was i don't know under the influence of something when he made it so inking this was really really fun for me
So now I'm going to be mixing that purple color I was explaining to you. Um, because I don't actually have purple ink, which seems ridiculous to me considering all the art supplies that I do have. Um, so I mixed basically about three parts pink to one part blue. And initially this color came out seriously dark. So dark it was almost kind of like just black with a hint of blue in it. Um, but what I did was just mix it with a bit more water and water it down and it turned into this really nice purple. So I had pre-drawn in a square where I wanted to color in this purple. So the spider web could kind of be going off the page, but not really. And I blocked in this whole square with this wash of purple and I tried to be really careful not to reactivate the black like I had with the forehead and the fringe. Um, so this first wash was a bit blotchy but you'll see I do a few different coats to make sure that it looks just how I wanted it to. And then this part you guys are gonna love. I, on this day that I filmed this, we were getting pizza and I was gonna be collecting the order. And stupidly, I left the card on the table right next to where I was filming. So I enlisted the help of Thing himself to come and just, uh, you know, protect that kind of personal information. And then I went through with my second coat to kind of just even out the wash of color on the spiderweb window. So now, because the window in the show is kind of mottled, not every pane is perfectly clean and not every pane is clear. Some of them are a bit grey, some of them are a bit darker, so I wanted to create that variation of this window spiderweb thing. Um, so I chose a few blocks of the spiderweb itself to just go through with an extra coat or two to create that difference and add something interesting to this picture. And I think that it made really the world of difference because before it was like, okay, cute, fine. And afterwards I was like, nice, well done. That looks pretty, pretty half decent. You'll also see that I went back through with this purple paintbrush and um, put some little lines, some accents in the title just to bring that purple to the bottom of the page as well so that it wasn't all just located right at the top. Um, I'm not sure if I got footage of that. If I do, great. If I don't, you know what happened. So basically, that's really the end of this drawing. Um, thank you for joining me, and I will show you the full picture right now.